simply uh, wanted to uh, hear from uh, your two departments on the issue of quality and performance measures and if they are in fact included in the contract. This is uh, Russ Marlin, Administrator and Executive Bureau of the Michigan Department of Corrections Board of Commissioners. Yes, we do have performance indicators in our contracts, both the health, mental health, and food service um, contracts. Um, I think the, the whole issue about is the quality, um, you know, with our food service uh, contract, the vendor, we require them to serve the exact same food that we receive. The exact same food, exact same uh, rotation of meals, exact same recipe. Food is exactly the same. We require their uh, employees to undergo the exact same uh, training that uh, we give our employees. Our state employees. Uh, they they follow that as far as uh, in the contract. The last time I was here, we talked about some fines that have been levied against the contractor for uh, unauthorized uh, meal substitutions. <coughs> Today, that uh, and I talked about our increased communication with uh, the director of the department, and the vice president of uh, Airmark, on a weekly basis, and we've seen those unauthorized meal substitutions significantly decline. Uh, we've seen some of the employee discipline numbers diminish. My boss, the director, still has these conversations with the uh, vice president. process of developing and creating an RFP, uh, a request for proposal, part of that process when we're looking at something like outsourcing is going through and baselining the data, if you will, at the agency in terms of the current level of services being provided. In order to get an apples to apples comparison, we have to go through and look at it and say, how are we measuring quality, effectiveness, and everything else with the current level of provision of services, so that we can compare and say, yes, this is actually an apples to apples comparison when we get down the road. So part of the time, time that we spend developing the request for proposal is to do exactly this, make sure that we have those measures for quality in place so that we can do a true comparison. So and I would argue that in the case of the, um, the contracts that, that, that I'm familiar with, specifically the food service one, the fact that we set in place the measures, we set in place those things that we needed to be able to do it, and then we put in place the penalty provisions if they don't meet the levels of service that we're expecting, shows that we do take the quality of our service into consideration when we do our RFPs. So we do make sure that it's a very prominent part of our process. Um, with the idea that when you get to the end, the metric that we're using, and you bring that to the Civil Service Commission of a cost comparison, we've taken into consideration all of those other factors as part of that process, and we're down to the final piece, which is the cost comparison. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. For people who want to see how the commission's dealing with uh, rule, <coughs> the standard D from the rule, chapter 7s and 7-3, seven we talked about this morning, we have the CS-138, you can read the decision that's coming out. It's CSC-21-2014-020, the one that's asked me and Mage at the Department of Corrections. We, we're dealing with this issue, and we are have some disagreements between the commissioners. And I've heard the comments this morning, we're taking those in earnest about whether we need to study standard D. But read the decision, you can see where the commission is coming down on this. And if you have any other questions or comments, we get emails, so you can send emails to us here. Now, is there a motion to adjourn? I, oh, I did sorry. have one uh, further question, and this is probably best directed at the uh, state personnel director.
there's been some reference to cost overruns of some of these contracts. Um, what, if any, provisions do we have uh, to deal with those? Um, for standard D um, approvals, we approve a specific dollar amount based on our uh, cost savings analysis that was submitted, we approve a certain dollar amount for a certain period of time. Um, so if there are cost overruns, um, then uh, they, the agency, would need to resubmit a CS-138 with a new dollar amount and a new cost analysis showing that um, they still meet the required cost savings that we have in our standards. Uh, so for instance, if uh, an agency is approved for uh, three years and find after two years that they, they're very close to running through that money, then they would need to submit a new cost savings analysis. They couldn't just continue to spend uh, whatever it is that they needed uh, in order to have the services done. Has this happened in the past where there's been a, a, a new request made? Not that I recall specifically. Sometimes uh, the cost savings may be uh, significantly greater than the, the 5 or 10 or 25 percent that we would have uh, as our standard. Uh, and as long as it continued to meet that, that maybe it wasn't as close, uh, wasn't as high of a savings as they were originally intended, uh, there could be that case. But I don't recall any specific examples of where that's occurred. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chair. Just by way of clarification, the Commission's final decision in that case will be published tomorrow and shared with the parties will be available on DSTARS at michigan.gov slash DSTARS uh, Friday morning. Thank you. I'm looking now for a motion to adjourn. So